Hello everyone, Festina here. In this video, we will learn how to configure cascading dropdowns. And in the process of building cascading dropdowns, we will learn about the key properties of dropdowns and also we will learn about the distinct and filter functions. By the end of this video, we will also take a look at the specific design properties of dropdowns. So let's get started. So first of all, a quick intro on what exactly a dropdown control is. This pretty much allows users to select a single value from a predefined list of options. The first important property about dropdowns is the items property. Let's click on the dropdown and go to the items property. And this is where we can specify the list of items that need to be displayed in the dropdown. And there are two ways of specifying the items in the dropdown. Either you can give a static list directly hard-coded in Power Apps. Otherwise, you can give a dynamic data list. You can connect to a data source and pull the information from your data source. To give you an example of how static items show up in the dropdown, I'm going to add a few countries over here. First, I'm adding USA, then I'm adding India, let us add Poland, and finally, I'm adding Denmark. This pretty much creates a static list. And now in the dropdown, when I click on this, I will be able to see the four options that I have given in the items property. And the next important property of dropdown is the default property. Default property specifies the default item to be displayed when the dropdown loads. Right now, there is nothing mentioned in the default property. I'm going to set that to India so that that becomes default for this dropdown. Now, when the dropdown resets or loads, the default value in the dropdown is going to be India. And the next important property is allow empty selection. This property decides whether the control can have no selected items. When this is set to false, there is always going to be a selected item in the dropdown. It is going to be either the default item, and if there is no default for this dropdown, it's going to be the first item in the list of items of the items property of the dropdown. Now let's start with configuring the cascading dropdowns. I'm just going to add three dropdowns and three associated labels onto the workspace over here. Cascading dropdowns in Power Apps are dropdown controls where the options made in one dropdown control depend on the selection made in another. This is commonly used in hierarchical data like countries, states, and cities. For our example of cascading dropdowns, I have created a SharePoint list called Branch Office Locations which contains the different countries, states, and respective cities wherein our organization has branch offices. It has a lot of items. You can see countries like United States, Canada, India, Germany, and France. The next step, we are going to connect this SharePoint list onto our Power App. Let's click on Add Data and choose SharePoint over here. Let's click on SharePoint and click on this connection. And here I can mention the URL of the SharePoint site or directly choose it from the recent sites. I'm going to choose Festec from the recent sites. And here I can see the list which I have created, branch office locations. And now I'm going to click on connect. This data source has been added to our app. Now let us go back to the SharePoint list. The country column that you see here is actually the default title column that has been renamed as country. This is a single line of text column. As the first step, I would like to display the different countries that are showing up in the country column of the SharePoint list. In the items property of the dropdown, I'm going to mention the name of the SharePoint list first, which is branch office locations. And then I give in a dot. And here I need to mention the name of the column, which is title, which was by default. I have just renamed that to be country. So here I'm giving in title. So right now, if I go and click on this dropdown, you can see a lot of items here. Whatever is present in the country column is showing up here, but this is not what I want. I would like to display the distinct values on this particular column. So for that, we are going to use the distinct function. Now in the items property, let us give in distinct. In this box, you can see how this function is supposed to be written. The source is the data source from which we want to pull distinct values. So I'm going to give the name of the SharePoint list, which is branch office locations. And the second one is the expression. 
I'm going to give the name of the column from which I would like to get the distinct values. So that would be the title column. And that's it. I'm giving the closing parenthesis. And right now, when we see this drop down, I can see the unique values of the countries present in the country column of the SharePoint list. In the next drop down, I would like to display all the states which are part of the country that has been chosen in the first drop down. We are going to filter out all the records which have the country mentioned in the first drop down. So for that, let us go ahead and write the filter function. I'm giving in filter. The first parameter of filter is the data source from which we are going to do the filtering, which is branch office locations. And the second one is the logical test. So our logical test is to check whether the title column, which is the country column, is equal to the country that is showing up in this dropdown. For that, I'm going to give title, which is from the SharePoint list, equal to. Let us mention the value which is in this dropdown. So that would be dropdown underscore country, which is the name of this dropdown, dot selected dot value. Now we have done the filtering part and right now we need to choose the state. So I'm going to give dot state, which is the other column. So state is a single line of text column in the SharePoint list and this contains all the states specific to a country. And once I give in state, I will be able to see all the states which are present in the country. But again, we do not see the distinct values. For that, we again need to give in the distinct function. Before the filter, I'm going to add in the distinct function. So right now we are asking for a distinct value. Now I'm removing this dot and giving in a comma. And at the end, I'm going to give the closing parenthesis. So right now we can see all the distinct states from the SharePoint list. As another example, I'm choosing India. And right now you can see the different states of India showing up here. In the next drop down, I would like to display the different cities which are part of the state that has been chosen in the second drop down. Let's go ahead and configure the items property. First, we need to do a filter on the data source and our data source is branch office locations SharePoint list. And next, we need to provide the logical test. And in our case, the logical test is going to be the value in the second dropdown, which is dropdown underscore state dot selected dot value. I need to compare this to the state column in the SharePoint list. So I'm going to give in state and that's it. We have filtered out the records and now I need to mention the city. So dot city. Here we do not really need to use the distinct function because the list already has distinct values. It has one distinct value for each location. Let me do a filter on the state and show you how that is. I'm choosing Tamil Nadu and you can see that it has five cities here. We can see the five cities in the city dropdown. Here is a real-time example of how we can use cascading dropdowns. I have added another SharePoint list called Global Power Platform Workshop Registration. For this, we're going to get the name and the branch office location of the user for attending the Power Platform Workshop. And I have added that data source to this app. And I have given in my name, I have chosen my country and state and my city as Chennai. And I'm going to click on register. So once I register, what happens is let us go back to the SharePoint list and I'm going to refresh it. So here you can see that a record has been added from our app. So on the register button, I have added a patch function. Patch function is used for creating a new record or editing an existing one. In our case, I have created a new record. The first parameter of the patch mentions the data source, which is a SharePoint list in our case. If at all we need to edit a record, we need to refer to the record to edit it. In our case, since we are adding a new record, I have used the defaults. So in the defaults, we need to mention the name of the data source, which is Global Power Platform Workshop Registration. And the next parameter is the one wherein we mention the data that needs to be patched onto the SharePoint list. What you see on the left hand side, the title, country, state and city are the four column names which you have in SharePoint. So in the right hand side, you can see this orange box which contains text input username. And here you can see that it is highlighted in orange. 
And same way, drop down refers to this one. So you can always check the colors which are showing up in this Power of X formula bar. The same will be highlighted on the canvas. And we are referring to these drop downs and text inputs and patching the data source with this information. So that is all about our example for cascading drop downs. Now let us quickly take a look at the specific design properties of drop downs. I'm going to click on the drop down. And on the right end, you can see a chevron, and we have chevron specific properties for drop downs. In advanced, you can search for chevron, and you will be able to see all the properties which contain that word. I'm going to change the chevron background to a different color. So let us choose blue violet, and you can see the background of the chevron being changed over here. And I can also change the chevron fill. Right now, it is set to white. And if I'm going to give it a blue, like a light blue, you can see a change over here. We can also change the color of the selected value in the drop down. So, this is what I'm talking about. I'm going to search for selection, and you can see two properties selection color and selection fill. Selection fill decides the color of the selected item in the drop down. Right now, you can see a change in this. I can also change the selection color. I'm going to change that to black. And here we go. This way you can customize your drop down. And now let us take a look at the four properties over here. The first one is on change. Any actions that you want to happen while changing the value in the drop down, you need to add in the on change property of the drop down. So, for example, if you are going to reset another control when you are changing the drop down, Add that in the on change property of the drop down. Next, we have on select. Any actions that you want to happen when you click or select the drop down, you need to add in the on select property of the drop down. And next, we have visible. If you want to hide or show your drop down, switch on or off your toggle. And you can also set conditions. So if you have some previous control based on which you want to show or hide a drop down, Go ahead and set the condition and give true or false to show or hide the drop down. And finally, you have display mode. Display mode, we have three types disabled, edit, and view. If I'm going to disable it, the drop down gets disabled. No one will be able to edit it. If I'm giving edit, then user will be able to choose the value in the drop down. And if I'm giving view, I will be able to see the item in it. It will not look like it's disabled. We cannot edit it. It's just a view mode, as the name suggests. In the next video, we will explore the radio button control in detail. If you enjoyed this video, like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel to be notified on upcoming videos.